Wake up. Ah, crap damn. What happened to me? Knocked out. Pipe wrench. That would explain it. Well, I should, you know, get back to finishing my video and all, while it's still relevant. Could be hard. What do you mean? You've been out for about a month. A month?! <laughs> Alright, thanks to Tall, Dark, and Stinky over there, I've had about a month of internets to catch up with, and let me tell you, saying stuff that hasn't already been said about this movie might be a little hard, but I'm gonna try it, because I have a lot on my mind. And frankly, some of it bears repeating. So now that I've had time to think, you may ask, am I still angry? Well, the answer is this. This film was a disaster on so many levels. So, yes, I am. The Snyderisms actually managed to creep in before the opening credits do, as the comedian's murder, set quite artistically to Unforgettable by Nat King, King Cole, is dragged out in a ridiculously long fight scene that leaves you going, ah, really? The opening credits that do follow are set to Bob Dylan's Times They Are A-Changin', and try to fill you in on the history of the world that the movie is presenting. Now, at first, I was hoping this would have some artistry, too, but instead, most of the information is just pounded into your head with all the subtlety of a car crash. Things that are only implied in the book, like the idea that the comedian may have shot Kennedy, is not only implied in this opening, but graphically shown in a manner that is tasteless at best and violently pornographic at worst. This could be said for pretty much every fight scene in the movie. It's overly done, overly choreographed, and couldn't be over too fast for me. Violence is the name of the game. No one asked you! Now, my YouTube mentor, the movie preview critic, did defend this pretty well, pointing out that it added a shock value that we might not have gotten if it would have stuck to the book's more subtle violence, but at the same time, that's all it was. Shock value. And shocking someone to get a rise out of them is pretty much the definition of pornography. Now, speaking of porn, what was up with that sex scene? Now, I do have to mention Malin Ackerman's acting. It wasn't as bad as people said she was. She wasn't bad, she was just horribly unremarkable. And let me tell you, seeing her naked did not change my opinion of that. As for the night owl, I never wanted to see a saggy fat ass, let alone to see it thrusting! <laughs> Hey, I used to hit that. The Night Owl? No, Lori. Oh yeah, the latex lich. Hrrrm, pervert. What was that, sociopath? Ah, guys, come on, you want me to finish this before June? Thank you. But what's Puddles of Gore without an awful soundtrack to go with it? That's right, despite the fact that the film opens pretty strong musically, the rest of the soundtrack follows painfully flat. Be it the awful usage of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah for the sex scene, or the Vietnam scene, featuring Ride of the Valkyries, which could best be described as a big, glowing, blue, retarded homage to Apocalypse Now. As for the characters populating this world, some are just dead on. I mean, Rorschach is perfect. But there are others like the Latex Lich, who I did have issues with. And let's not forget Ozymandias, who is supposed to be the height of human strength and performance and has the build of... me. Great. When I mention Ozzy, I have to mention the ending. And it's spoiler time. It's spoiler! It's spoiler time! Now, the film's conclusion involves Ozymandias building a machine that will frame Dr. Manhattan, the super-powered atomic being who was glowing blue and annoying me earlier, to make it look like he's blown up a bunch of major cities on the face of the Earth, thus ending the Cold War because everyone will be really afraid of Dr. Manhattan. Now, I take a lot of issue with this, for a number of reasons. Firstly, Dr. Manhattan was supposed to be America's Superman, so I don't see that this would end the Cold War just as much as it would make a lot of countries hate America a lot. Now, even if he did attack New York, 
I still get that vibe from him. Aside from that, the explosions that we see aren't as effective as what we had in the book. The final plan that Ozymandias unleashes is gory and gross, and it's a very striking final chapter to a book whose violence was very subtle. In this film, we have the exact opposite, explosive violence to the whole thing, and then the horrible act that's supposed to leave us in shock really has very little, if any, emotional effect. And seeing a bunch of characters dying who you won't know who they are if you haven't read the book doesn't help that in any way, shape, or form. Now the book's ending. Now there was an ending. So instead, Ozzy's plan involves... Okay, get this. He's cloned a psychic brain... And he's trying to construct this giant alien-looking squid thing that comic book designers design. And they will put the psychic brain in it, and then they'll teleport it to New York. And the teleporting alien brain psychic squid will be so shocked from the teleportation that he will send out psychic waves that will blow up everyone's brain. I mean, how crazy is that? How Actually, when I say it out loud, that is like the weirdest thing I have ever heard. Okay, I will admit it is a very, very far stretch, but maybe it was just never meant to be transferred to screen. I know some of my comments may sound kind of nitpicky, but this film really dashed my hopes hard in a lot of respects. Now, sure, the script was pretty close to the original comic book, but... At the same time, it sounded stilted when people actually read it. And while the visuals tried to match the original book, it just didn't capture the simplicity and all the superficial, explosive effects and slow motion just took me right out of the film. The ending was the worst part of it, just because it took all these things, kind of dashed your hopes for any emotional effect, and had the characters act out of character to try to explain what the emotional effect should be by going on tirades about morality. I can't give Watchmen a good rating. It just fell flat for me in every way. Conspiracy is afoot. Must warn Alan Moore. I can't let you do that, Rorschach. There's only one good thing to do. Must follow through. No. You won't. DUDE! You said it yourself, Izumi. It's been 20 years. It's not a spoiler anymore. While I will clean your walls, Izumi, I like the film. And for that reason, moments from now, I'm pooping on your desk. A power outage will follow. I see many delays. Wow, he really did it. I really hope this doesn't give me cancer. Well, Doc, at least this video's over. Oh, Izumi, nothing ends.